In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Peace be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. O God, who hast hallowed this day by the martyrdom of thine apostles, Peter and Paul, grant unto thy church in all things to follow the precepts of those through whom she received the beginning of religion. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Herod the king laid violent hands upon some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And when he saw that it was pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. The very night when Herod was about to bring him out, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And beheld, and behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened to them of its own accord, and they went out and passed on through one street, and immediately the angel left him. And Peter came to himself and said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already on the point of being sacrificed. The time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength to proclaim the word fully, so that all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be to The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time when Jesus came, into the district of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, who do men say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that the Son of Man, that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, 
the Son of the living God? And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The word of the Lord. Let those to be ordained priests come forward. Reverend Mr. Stephen Hilgendorf. Present. Reverend Mr. Samuel Keyes. Present. Reverend Mr. Patrick McCain. Present. Do you judge them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Then relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of priests. Dear Ordinandi, dear friends in Christ, the annual festival of the apostles St. Peter and Paul is a wonderful context for the ordination of priests. So much from the life and the wisdom of these princes of the apostles sheds light on the ministry of priests, even on our own day. Let me reflect with you on one poignant moment in the latter life of St. Peter the Apostle. Well after the years of discipleship and formation with the Lord, after the events of the Passion and Resurrection, after the, the fire of the Holy Spirit impelled him to preach the gospel in Jerusalem, in Antioch, and then Rome, he experienced what I imagine he himself would describe as his most profound conversion. He was already living under house arrest in the Eternal City, Rather loosely, it must be said, since the persecution of Christians was a matter of whim and so increased and ebbed in intensity. Word had come, however, that a new and much harsher persecution was about to be enacted. And so the decision was made that the leaders of the community would flee Rome, regroup outside of the city, and begin again there until such time it was safe to return. St. Peter fled, and he found himself on the Via Appia, not quite a mile from the Ardentine Gate. Praying as he walked, he noticed a figure coming towards him, and he realized that it was the Lord Jesus. But the Lord was crowned with thorns. The Lord was bearing the marks of the Passion, and the Lord was carrying the cross and going in the opposite direction. Quo vadis, Domine, he asked. Where are you going, Lord? Romam, eo iterum crucifici. I'm going to Rome to be crucified again. As the vision left him, St. Peter found the courage to go back. 
to suffer with the church in Rome during that persecution, and ultimately to receive the crown of martyrdom himself by being crucified upside down in the Circus of Nero on the Vatican Hill. Celebrating an ordination to the priesthood on this solemnity, and in the light of the supreme witness of martyrdom, carries special significance both for the ordinariate and for the men being ordained. Our diocese is not just named for St. Peter. We have a unique and intimate connection with his successor. And so the chair of St. Peter evokes the authority of right teaching and orthodox practice that binds us together in Catholic unity. St. Peter's faith and St. Paul's zeal for mission form the spiritual construct of what it means to be an ordinariate Catholic. And so it is fitting that when it comes to ordaining her priest and sending into mission, our particular church does so on the feast day of the apostles. But personally, Patrick, Stephen, and Sam, Saints Peter and Paul are given to you today as your patrons so that you might imitate their virtues, yes, immerse yourselves in their apostolic courage, yes, and come to inherit the heavenly glory that is their ultimate reward and promise. While the figures of St. Peter and Paul certainly invoke this lofty vision of faith, of authority, of preaching, I would urge you not to overlook the power of their patronage and their intercession in the daily task of your own ongoing conversion to Christ. Through sacramental ordination, the priest is conformed to Christ to such a degree that he not only represents Christ to the church, he makes Christ present in the church. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church so well teaches, in the ecclesial service of the priest, Christ himself is present to his church as head of the body, shepherd of the flock, high priest of the redemptive sacrifice, and teacher of truth. This is what the church means by saying that the priest, by virtue of the sacrament of holy orders, acts in persona Christi capitis. Christ is the source of all priesthood. The priest of the old law was but a figure of Christ, and the priest of the new law acts in the person of Christ. But of course, dear brothers, conformity to Christ implies conformity to his passion and to his cross, to his sacrificial gift of love to the Father. On the horizon of faith, the Lord's cross stands as the clearest and most eloquent expression of God's love for us and his power to save us. Our own priestly ministry is rightly evaluated to the extent that it expresses that love or not, the same sacrificial character or not. So, dear brothers, with eyes fixed firmly on the cross of Christ, gird yourselves now, because now you will have in this ordination liturgy your own quo vadis moment. After the laying on of hands and the prayer of ordination and the anointing of your hands with sacred chrism, you will be presented with the chalice and paten containing the body, the bread and the wine for the celebration of Mass. The bishop's words to the new priest are poignant. Understand what you do, celebrate what you, what you imitate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. The Lord's cross is the gift that you receive in this ordination. As priests, it is not enough for you to handle the sacrifice to facilitate or orchestrate the Eucharistic celebration. It is not enough for you somehow to present the cross to the people. You are not removed from his offering. You are not a mere proxy. Conformity to Christ means that you are Christ, and you are offering yourselves to the Father. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, because of the Spirit's action, not only at an ordination, but in every celebration of the Mass, 
you are being changed by the very mystery you celebrate. Just as the faithful are changed by the Eucharist they receive in Holy Communion. What you offer on the physical altar of the Mass expresses the offering of yourself on the altar of your hearts. The efficacy of priestly ministry, the power of priestly authority, the eloquence of priestly preaching and charity is derived from your willingness to lay down your life in full conformity with Christ the High Priest. Nothing less. Day by day, you take into your hands the mystery of Holy Thursday and Good Friday. It is the mystery of dying and rising that you will trace in the lives of the faithful entrusted to your care. And it is a mystery that the church has always contemplated through the gift of tears. Do not be afraid of those tears. Do not be afraid of tears shed over the physical suffering of the people that you will anoint in the hospital. Tears over the spiritual suffering of so many who do not have a relationship with the Lord and find themselves feeling alienated, abandoned, afraid, and alone. Tears, of course, for your own sins and weakness, which you will confront far more often than you would like. And tears for the countless expression of human brokenness in search of grace that you will come across in the confessional. Tears over the injustice, the avarice, the violence, the disregard for the sanctity of life that you will encounter in this world that is so counter to the will of God for human flourishing. Ultimately, priestly tears those shed outwardly, those shed inwardly, are an expression of the church's extreme sorrow at our rejection of divine love. Indeed, in the Father's marvelous plan for our salvation, love itself became incarnate, and we nailed it to a tree. That is the ministry, that is the love that you must enflesh in your own person. But these tears of the priest, these tears, and I know your brothers will agree, express far more than sorrow. They are a pondering over the deep working of grace that raises up what has been cast down. They are an expression of hope that God can accomplish more than we can ever imagine. And tears of a priest are a prayer for mercy, for forgiveness, in great gratitude, and for salvation. The gift of tears are, after all, the lens through which we can see the power of God at work, especially in life's most difficult moments. Pope Francis spoke most beautifully about this, commenting on the tears of Mary Magdalene outside of the tomb on Easter morning. Those tears, he said, were the eyeglasses through which she was able to see the resurrection, the first to see the resurrection. She saw it through tears, and because those for her were tears of sorrow and tears of love all at the very same time. The story of St. Peter's encounter with the Lord on the Via Appia does not actually say whether or not Peter wept at that encounter and that realization. But brothers, how could he not? How could he not? Not tears of dread, not tears of fear for what awaited him back in Rome. Rather, tears of hope and consolation in the knowledge that his relationship with Christ was the very soul of his, of his apostolic ministry. And his share in the person and the mission of Christ was so intimate and so interior that he would proclaim Christ, even in the manner of his death. We know that as soon as Christianity was declared legal, a rather famous basilica was erected over the site of Peter's crucifixion and burial on the Vatican Hill. But a small church was also built on the Via Appia, on the very spot of that conversion, 
a church that to this day is called simply the Church of the Quo Vadis, precisely to keep St. Peter's conversion there in the forefront of the church's consciousness. May conversion and conformity to Christ be at the forefront of your priestly consciousness and ministry. And when that ministry brings you to tears, and it will, remember St. Peter. Remember Mary Magdalene. Remember all of the saints. Call upon the assistance of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whose own pure heart was pierced with a sword of sorrow. And through those tears, see the work of grace. See the resurrection. See the hope of glory. And share that hope, that joy, with your people. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank, as worthy fellow co-workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel, and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently, in accord with the Church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care, observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be more united closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us kneel.
Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you everything progresses. Through you all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of seventy wise men, and with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured out an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is the Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his Apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, grant us these helpers that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood, Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office, which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching, and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mystery, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for the whole world. And so may the full number of the nation be gathered together in Christ, be transformed into your one people, and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. Guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. The Lord Jesus, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do. Imitate what you celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God, the Almighty Father. Consecrate, O Lord, the oblations which we offer unto thee, and with them accept on our behalf the prayers of thy blessed apostles, and thereby cleanse us from all sin, and defend us from all adversity, through Jesus Christ our Lord. in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, through the great shepherd of thy flock, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promise to be with them always, even into the end of the ages. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify the high glorious name evermore praising thee and saying. Therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly pray thee through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord. And we ask that thou accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices. We offer them unto thee first for thy holy Catholic Church, that thou vouchsafe to keep her in peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with thy servant, Francis, our Pope, with me, thine unworthy servant, and all the faithful guardians of the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, O oh Lord, thy servants and handmaids, and all who here around us stand in faith with no notice of thee, and their steadfastness manifest, on whose behalf we offer unto thee, or who themselves offer unto thee their sacrifice of praise, for themselves and for all who are there, for the redemption of their souls, for the hope of their Blessed Joseph of God, Alfonso, thy blessed apostle and martyr, 
This, then, is the oblation of our service and that of thine whole family, which we offer also for thy servant, whom thou hast kindly advanced to the order of the priesthood. We beg thee graciously to accept it, Lord, and in thy mercy to preserve in them the gifts thou hast given, that what they have received from thy divine goodness they may fulfill by the aid of thy divine grace. Vouchsafe, O God, we beseech thee in all things to make this oblation blessed, approved, and accepted, a perfect and worthy offering, that it may become for us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who the day before he suffered took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes lifted up to heaven unto thee, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to thee, he blessed broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Likewise, after supper, taking also this goodly chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to thee, he blessed and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Wherefore, O Lord, we, thy servants, and thy holy people also, remembering the blessed passion of the same Christ, thy Son, our Lord, as also his resurrection from the dead, and his glorious ascension into heaven, do offer unto thine excellent majesty of thine own gifts and bounty, the pure victim, the holy victim, the immaculate victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. About safe to look upon them with a merciful and pleasant countenance, and to accept them, even as thou didst vouchsafe to accept the gifts of thy servant, Abel, the righteous, and the sacrifice of our patriarch, Abraham, and the holy sacrifice, the immaculate victim, which thy high priest, Melchizedek, offered unto thee. We humbly beseech thee, almighty God, command these offerings to be brought by the hands of thy holy angel to thine altar on high in the sight of thy divine majesty, that all we who at this partaking of the altar shall receive the most sacred body and blood of thy Son, may be fulfilled with all heavenly benediction and grace. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants and handmaids who have gone before us filled with the fuel of faith and who seek the seat of peace. To them, O Lord, as well as rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant the abode of distraction, of discretion and love and peace. Bless him and all servants who hope in the multitude of thy mercy vouchsafe to grant some part in fellowship with thy holy apostles and martyrs, with John, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicitas, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and with all thy saints, within whose fellowship we beseech thee admit us, not weighing our merits, but granting us forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through whom, O Lord, thou dost ever create all these good things, dost sanctify, quicken, bless, and bestow them upon us. By whom and with whom and in whom, to thee, O Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory throughout all ages. 
world without end. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we beseech thee, from all evils past, present, and to come. And at the intercession of the blessed and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with thy blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and with Andrew and all the saints, favorably grant peace in our days that by the help of thine availing mercy, we may ever both be free from sin and safe from all distress. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to thine apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of thy church, and grant to her peace and unity according to thy will, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be
almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us and that we are very members incorporated in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Let us pray. O Lord, who dost satisfy the hungry soul with bread from heaven, vouchsafe also to defend us, we beseech thee, by the prayers of thine apostles against all adversity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who hath founded the church and doth guide her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully exercise the duties of priesthood. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. May he make you true shepherds to administer the living bread and word of life to the faithful that they may grow evermore in the unity of the body of Christ. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth in peace.